Hey people of the interweb, I'm Nostalgic Dave, and it's about dang time, don't you think, that we continue this series? Welcome to Trilby's Notes, third game in the Chizo Mythos series. Uh, let's get started. New game? Uh, no, new tutorials, no commentary. I'm doing that. The following documents are taken from the handwritten notes of Trilby, an STP field operative whose real name is classified. Game over. That was what I thought as I stood and watched a foam manor collapse into flaming ash. The ordeal was over. Jim Fowler was expelled from school for truancy, a bright future in tatters. So when Taylor took to the bottle, her broadcasts became slurred, her eyes hollow and unwelcoming. She soon vanished from the television screens. As for me, I tried to return to the life as a cat burglar, but I had been forever tainted by my time spent in that wretched house. The memories of my possession came back in my nightmares. Every night, I was there again, in the mansion, staring out through the unfamiliar eyes as Philip died at my hands. Ugh. I became convinced that John Defoe was not at rest, that someday he would return for me. I became so terrified of invisible enemies that I forgot about the tangible ones. Well, it was bound to happen anyway. Two slow, miserable years after Defoe Manor, a barrage of truncheon blows taught me a harsh lesson in reality. And I woke up in the kind of filthy cell I assumed would be my new home. But then he came. The man from the government, with his nervous smile, offering an alternative. The STP, Special Talent Project. It hadn't been that much earlier that I would have sooner died than entered an obligation with anyone. Why did the music stop? That's just odd. Have you ever heard of a loop before? Okay, fine. <laughs> Least of all the government. Had Defoe Manor changed me so much? Apparently... Whatever my reasons, I left my past behind and resolved to give my new superior nothing to complain about. I spent a year and a half completing assignments, developing contacts, building a reputation, and then the past caught up. In the summer of 1997, I became concerned about Simone Taylor's mental well-being. The papers were reporting her continual breakdown and she had become a virtual recluse. That doesn't sound good. I had no idea if my appearance would assist her or hinder. Son of a freaking gun. Stay. <sighs> assist or hinder. I had, after all, deliberately allowed her to think me dead. That would probably creep her out then. Presumably, she knew differently now, after the media coverage of my arrest. Oh, well, okay, never mind. But I would expect her to be bitter about my subterfuge. On balance, I decided that a meeting with an old friend would most likely be beneficial. I came to her apartment building on a warm, stormy night and braced myself for the encounter. I mean, if I'm this nervous, there's a problem. I hope there's no running with that, because then I'm never going to get away. All right. Uh, can knock. I knocked sharply upon Simone's door. Nothing. Okay. Can knock again. <laughs> Receiving no reply, I knocked again louder. Nothing. Okay. Well, I know I got a lockpick. Can knock. Still no response. The doorman had assured me Simone was in. I decided it was time to enter by my own special methods. Use lock pick. I reasoned that Simone could have been in trouble. 
And even if she wasn't, then at worst, I was only playing to my reputation. I spent a few minutes feverishly picking the lock, then let myself in. It is completely dark in here. Ugh, where are the blinds? Uh, open. 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 Blinds. I wasn't close enough. Well. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, there we go. Open. Blinds. I pulled open the blinds. Well, I think I found a body. Touch. Body? The body on the floor was undoubtedly Simone. I felt for a pulse, and my hands came away, stained with long, cold blood. My fingers traced the outline of a large wound in her torso. Slashed by a big weapon, wielded by a big assailant. Man! I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her, too. <laughs> okay, sure. I called for an ambulance, as futile as it would be, and left before they arrived. Due to me being a clear murder suspect, I was relieved from duty for the week it took for the Ministry of Occultism to inspect the flat and confirm supernatural activity. My superior simultaneously apologized and assigned me to investigate if there was a connection to the Defoe Manor incident. Merely reading those three words, capitalized on the front of a loose leaf file, brought the nightmares back more intensely than ever. Oh boy. Sure enough, a field agent reported that looters had discovered us and sold several artifacts from the mansion, including the wooden idol that housed John Defoe's soul. To my surprise, no murders had been reported or committed by anyone who had come into contact with the acc accursed trinket. I did not find this reassuring. I quickly advised James Fowler to go into hiding. He was stunned, but agreed. The boy had sense and still respected my judgment. This done, I began following the idol's trail. From the pawn shop, it had entered the possession of one Professor Abed Chahal. Now, I wonder where we've heard that name before. An authoritative historian, blah, I can't speak, he had scheduled some kind of antique fair in the Clan Bronwyn Hotel on a small island off the coast of Anglesey, popular with tourists. Assuming the role of a scholar of antiquities, I booked a room. On the 28th of July, 1997, I caught a ferry from Port... I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. Uh, I'm going to try, though. Porthlachog, I think. Porthlachog? Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, in Anglesey, and arrived at around 3 p.m. in Clan Bronwyn's. I. Clan. Oh my god. Clan Bronwyn Island's coastal village. The Clan Bronwyn Hotel. 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 Was in the island's center, surrounded by forest. I made my way there on foot. Hi, who are you? You're Tribby, right? As soon as I arrived, I was greeted by a balding man in a gray anorak. I wondered if I was expected to know who he was. That depends. My name is Lankman. I'm with the Ministry of Occultism. Oh? I thought the Ministry were clear on the fact that I was handling this on my own. Maybe there are still people who don't trust you, Mr. Chalby. What? I haven't stolen anything since I joined the STP. Your colorful past is not what concerns the superiors. 
It hasn't gone unnoticed that your history with Defoe Wraith influences your psychologic influences you psychologically. I'm sure you resist, but it could cause you to act irrational. Everyone just feels a little safer with someone else on the ground. I see. You can rest assured that I will endeavor to maintain absolute professionalism on this assignment. Nevertheless, I have my orders. Uh -huh. I would suggest we keep out of each other's way, then, and pursue separate assignments. I'm sure I don't want to get in your... And I don't want to get in yours. Fuck, it said something. Uh, the Clan Bronwyn Hotel... Lobby was a warm welcome. The building was certainly well maintained, and yet there was something about it that nagged at the back of my mind, quickening my pulse. Okay, I dismissed the sensation, an act which, in retrospect, I would come to regret. Good evening, Terence Railby. I have a reservation. Ah, oh, yes. You're here for the antique fair. We put you in room 3C, on the third floor, if you'd just like to sign the checking book. Hi. Hello, Bethan. Just letting you know I'll be having dinner in my room today. That's absolutely fine, Professor. This, I decided, was what they call a golden opportunity. And they still call it that to this day. Professor Cho? Yes? I'm afraid you have me... At a disadvantage. Railway. Terence Railway. We met at so in Sotheby's a few years ago. Eh, uh, oh. Oh, you don't remember me? No, no, of course I do. Terry Railway. Have you been? The astute reader has already guessed that both Terence Railway and the previous meeting were utter fiction. Well, now we're breaking the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor, the floor the wall. We're play, we'll play. God damn it! We're breaking the floor, floor. Fuck! I can't even fail at failing. I can't fail at failing at failing at failing to fail. Shush. <laughs> the the astute reader. Yes. Yeah. 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 I kind of forget that. I had spent some time studying Chahal's movements and habits. He was, by all ac accounts, absent-minded, and that was something I could use. Okay. I'm well, thanks. I was hoping I'd run into you. I've heard interesting things about the items you're showcasing here. You remember I do freelance scouting for some wealthy collectors. Oh, wait, no. What? Okay, I guess I have to keep reading. Well, a client of mine has expressed an interest in relics from Defoe Manor in somewhere. He's been on my back for a while. Between you and me, he seems pretty obsessed. What remained of Professor Chahal's suspicion melted away from his expression as the opportunity to make money entered the conversation. Wow. Okay. Well, I'm sure I wouldn't... Want to damage your professional status? Would you like to come up to my room for drinks? Oh, I don't want to impose. No imposition at all. Please, follow me. Your room key, Mr. Rabbi? Ah, thank you. Please lead the way, Professor. And we're going that way. Okay. Hi. A bit. What was your friend? Oh, let me introduce you. This is my personal assistant, Siobhan. She accompanies me on most of my excursions. Siobhan, this is Mr. Rabe, an old acquaintance. He's looking for information on Defoe Manor artifacts. Oh, really? Him and half the people we meet. What is it about this place? Never underestimate the attraction of a mystery, my dear. Please, take a seat, Terry. I'll be right with you. If someone's that absent-minded, then they're not just that. They're also... Also got a long-term memory loss or something. So, interested in ghost stories? The girl struck me as a forceful personality. I gave the matter some thought before replying. Okay. No, not really. 
I'm just scouting on behalf of a client, like I told the professor. Hmm. You know, it's strange to see someone as young as you in the antiques trade. How so? And come to think of it, I thought only old men dressed like that. No offense, Matt. None taken. I didn't catch your last name. It's O'Malley. Silvan O'Malley. Couldn't be more Irish if I tried, could it? I could. Sorry to keep you waiting, dear boy. Now then, what shall we talk about? Well, let's see. What do we want to talk about? Um, ask. How do I spell her name again? Silvan. I think that's what it was. I didn't understand the word seal. Talk. I was talking to myself. Talk to Sealban. Oh, for ask question. How do you not understand understand the word question? Okay, so ask. Just talking to me. Okay, what? Talk to Chahal. I needed to be more specific and talk to one of them about something. Okay. Talk to Chahal about artifacts. Yeah, artifacts. Didn't understand. How did you not? <sighs> talk, talk, talk to Chahal about himself. What have you been up to lately, Professor? Oh, do call me a bed. I'm doing a little lecture tour on famous antique collections at the moment. Taking me all over. I was only about to attend the fair because I'm speaking at Bangor on Monday. Okay. Talk to... Uh... Am I spelling it wrong or something? Whoa, 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 whoa. Seal bond. I don't know how to spell her name. Uh, crap. <laughs> uh, talk to Chahal about Dofo, Defo. Wait, about Idol. Tell me, does a huge man in a welding mask and leather apron mean anything to you? No, re not really, should it? <sighs> Never mind. It's a small African figurine that my client wants me to look into, resembling a rather ugly tribal god. That old thing? Honestly, despite its age, it's virtually valueless. That's what I said, but my client is very insistent. He's interested in the paranormal and the idol features in some of the more unlikely accounts of the Defoe Manor incident. Well, I don't suppose I should ask questions if this man of yours wants to take it off my hands. I don't have it on me right now. It's being kept in the hotel safe. Perhaps we can work out a deal after the fair. I had intended to display it with the other Defoe artifacts. Inwardly, I just wanted to. <laughs> Inwardly, I just wanted to get this mission completed as fast as possible, but I didn't want to risk suspicion or giving off the wrong impression. Okay, that would be fine. So, just out of interest, what else have you picked up from the mansion? Odds and ends, basically, some silverware and ceramics, most of a burnt rocking chair. And the painting, of course. Painting? A landscape from a wall in the mansion's lounge. Of little artistic value, but the artist features prominently in Defoe Manor. Matthew Defoe. 
Yes, that's him. Yes, Bethan. She runs in the hotel. She asked if she could... Okay, hang it in the lobby. I saw it. Instantly, I recalled the sick feeling I had felt in the lobby. I had seen the painting, but had paid it little heed. Oh. Are you all right, Mr. Rabbit? You've gone rather pale. What? I'm sorry. Lost in history, eh? Something like that. Oh, jeez! Hi! What the hell was that? What the hell was what? You were just sitting there, then you went all stiff like you'd seen a ghost. You didn't see it? See what, Mr. Railby? I'm sorry, I... I have to go. Something's wrong. Oh, well, we won't keep you here then. We'll see you later, maybe? Jeez! Every little sound is making me jump now. My head was spinning and a sudden nausea churned in my gut. The world seemed to be pulsating the corners of the room, wavering like a heat haze. His body is here. His... It may say I imagined these things, and I thought that must have been the case. Was I going out of my mind? Was the hotel really changing into some nightmarish twin? Was I the only one who could see it? If I was hallucinating, it was too complex. The harsh wooden floor beneath my f feet real enough. The horrendous stench of rotten flesh that reached my nostrils could not have been conjured by imagination. I decided I had to finish John Defoe's idol I had to find John Defoe's idol as soon as possible. If not that, then at least the painting Shahal had mentioned. I was convinced that some connection lay between Defoe Manor and this sudden madness. His body is here, his soul is not. Open door. Door. <laughs> I didn't understand the word door. All you have to do is say it. Fine. Open door. The door was stuck shut. Well, let's follow the demon character who we have no idea who it is. Oh. Run. I already don't like the sound of that. The lobby, too, had been tainted, and the painting I sought was absent. Presumably, it only existed in the hotel's normal form. If that was the case, I needed to find a way back there, or dispel the hallucination if this truly was all in my mind. I keep missing something, although I don't know if I can really do anything about it. What? I can't hear you! Seriously, what the hell are you guys saying? Speak louder! No? Fine! Oh, I get it. Hold it. All right, so I get what the stopping is. I've always, like, because I was, like, doing an attempted recording earlier. I didn't get this far. I barely got far at all. Anyway, wasn't able to get to this point just because for some reason, like, it, it was functioning poorly. Let's just leave it at that. But, yeah, I think I figured out the controls perfectly now, I think. We'll find out next time because I am going to leave this video here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Uh, if you liked it, push that like button in so far you can't see it anymore. If you really liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Got any suggestions for any horror games, just let me know in the comments below. 
Uh, if you want to check out any of the other Chizou Mythos uh, videos that I've done up to this point, or whenever you're watching this, in the past, I suppose, uh, <laughs> or currently, uh, click the box down in that corner over there. Or if you want to watch the rest of this playlist, uh, just click the box across from my head over there. However, in the meantime, I'm out and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!